in a world where carbs are your enemy, you need one man to help you fight your battles. That man is Jimmy. Combating nutrition, disinformation, and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. nutritional therapy practitioner Christine Moore and hosted by veteran health podcaster Jimmy Moore. Listen in as they feature nuggets of nutritional knowledge and provide practical application of what to do with this newfound dietary wisdom in your pursuit of optimal health. Visit our website nutritionalpearlspodcast.com to explore more nutritional pearls that could change your life. And now it's time to blow you away with today's featured nutritional pearl. Here's Jimmy and Christine. What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live. And we're here with another episode of Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com is the website. And if you want to engage live in the content, you got to go follow me over on Instagram Live. I'm at Living Low Carb Man. L-I-V-I-N-L-O-W-C-A-R-B-M-A-N. Once you're there, you can engage live just like all these people are doing right now. Thank you guys for being here today on Jimmy Rants. If you missed the live, you can watch it on replay for up to 24 hours. After 24 hours, poof, it disappears. You need to hop on over to YouTube, type in a keyword search, Jimmy Rants. Uh, you will find the show also youtube.com slash man. Finally, the best of the best moments of this here show, we make a podcast out of it. It's called the Jimmy Rants Podcast over on Apple Podcasts as well as Stitcher. All of these links, you guys, are at jimmyrants.com. Today's Jimmy Rants, we've got a Nutritional Pearls Podcast crossover episode. And so welcome in to the Nutritional Pearls Podcast. There's the beautiful, the talented, the lovely, the awesome, the amazingest woman, wife, girlfriend in the whole whitey whitey world, Christina Wiener. <laughs> hey known as Christine Moore. She is a nutritional therapy practitioner, uh, and we do this podcast on Mondays called the Nutritional Pearls Podcast. And so, welcome into your show. It's been a while since we've been here. We've been busy, busy, busy. So, yeah, it's nice to be back. Yeah, so we do this crossover episode with my show on Instagram Live called Jimmy Rants. And lately, Christine, on Jimmy Rants, I've been doing something pretty cray. You want to hear about it? You're always doing something, Craig. <clears throat> well, that is my middle name, Jimmy Craymore. <laughs> Jimmy Craig Craymore. So, yeah, so what I've been doing uh, over the past few days is I issued this challenge to my uh, followers here on Instagram. Why don't you join me on a seven-day water fasting challenge? And so in the midst of this, I've been giving lots of little updates and little educational types of things. So I thought it would be fun for this Nutritional Pearls podcast crossover episode to get your perspective on what extended fasting is doing, maybe some of the complications people are having, and your input. So at first blush, and by the way, I am currently in today for now. Physically, I'm in the fourth day, just literally passed it a couple hours ago. Um, so what's that, uh, 74 hours now in? So give us your perspective on fasting in general, and then what do you think about those of us that are doing extended fasting? So I think um, fasting is a great idea for people that, um, especially that have blood sugar irregularities, it's a great way to get the blood sugar stable. Yeah, um, gives, quickly. It gives your pancreas a break, it gives your thyroid a break, um, and I, I think, um, I mean, there's many ways to do fasting. So you can do intermittent fasting. If so, like if you have a small window where you eat in an eight hour uh, window and then the other 16 you don't, that's intermittent fasting. And when you're doing keto, that's very easy to do. Yes, piece of cake. Yeah, and then um, extended fasting is a little bit more um, hardcore. Um, 
I was going to do the fast with you, not all seven days, um, but I, I uh, ended up getting sick. I'm, I'm better now, so what I might do she's is... She's still sick in the head because <clears throat> she's still married to me. Well, that goes without saying. Hey! But um, I, I might start on Monday and try Ooh. to finish out with you because I, I find that when I'm traveling, it's very hard for yeah. me. When I'm not in my routine, it's very hard for me to, to do something like that. So... I may start on Monday and try to try to finish out with you. So as of the recording of this, Monday is tomorrow. If you're yes. listening on the Nutritional Pearls podcast, today is when yes. she started. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, and I have gone as long as 36 Six hours. hours. Yeah. Um, then I started feeling bad. And I think my problem then was I wasn't doing the electrolytes. Yeah. All right, guys. I've been doing this all week on this water fasting challenge and these updates. Everybody go get your salt. I use Redmond's Real Salt. I had this at church this morning and it was so awesome to just tilt back and, and have it. And my pastor knows what I'm doing, so it was pretty funny. But everybody go get your salt. Here we go, three, two, one. A little bit extra. Woo! <laughs> that is so good. You're probably gonna need to get some of drink now. <laughs> oh, I have my dilly dilly ready to go, but. <laughs> wow. That is a lot of salt, <laughs> yeah. but it's so good. And the cool thing, and I'm gonna drink here in a minute, but I wanna talk through this salt burn. Uh, the cool thing is when you have the salt, Christine, it boosts you. Can you talk about some of the reasons why? Now this Redmond's Real Salt has lots of minerals and micronutrients in it. What's that doing? Well, so I mean, there's several things that's going on with, um, with you doing the salt. First of all, you're actually, you know, putting something in your mouth. And so for some people, the, act, the, sensation of the eating. act of not eating can be a problem. Right. So if you just do a little bit of salt, you're, you feel like you're getting something. Um, with those salts, the, the Redmond's Real Salt, it is full of minerals. And so when you're fasting, you still need to get those micronutrients in that your body needs. And so the salt especially the different color salts have different minerals in them that your body needs. And so um, big minerals are your electrolytes. And so those consist of sodium, potassium, uh, magnesium, calcium, and um, Zinc? chloride. Oh. Um, those are your electrolytes. And basically those help your um, nerves to communicate with each other. So if, if you are depleted in electrolytes, you're going to have uh, muscle cramps. Um, and tired. You're going to have brain fog. You're going to be tired. Anybody got any of those symptoms while you've been fasting? Hmm. You might get some headaches. Um, just not your husband. Right, exactly. Not well, just your you're, husband. You're, you're my headache, but anyway. Oh, did I just say that out loud? <laughs> uh, anyway, so... Those electrolytes are very important to keep your nerves communicating with each other. Um, the, your electrolytes also help maintain your um, fluid balance. So it's important when you're doing the electrolytes to make sure that you drink water too. Uh, not diet soda or anything like that, but you want to drink water. So let's drink to that, guys. Dilly dilly time. Three, two, one. Here we go. And in this, I have those fasting drops from Keto Chow, which have concentrated forms of sodium as well as magnesium, which are key in electrolytes. So continue. Yeah. Um, so you're... Resuming Amazon Music. What do you want to play? Alexa, stop. My Alexa started. She wanted to get in on the podcast. Too. <laughs> she, she wanted to fast too. My, my A-L-E-X-A wanted to fast as well. So it's interesting. Different um, muscle... Um, issues mean may possibly different electrolyte deficiencies. So if your eye twitches, um, if you have um, like an irregular heartbeat, that's probably a magnesium deficiency. Mm. If you have... Somebody leg... mentioned that earlier, by the way, on the earlier show I did. Mm -hmm. If you have leg cramps, that might be uh, probably a potassium deficiency. So that's why it's important to not just do one here, one there. You need to find a mix of all these electrolytes that are properly balanced because right. too much 
potassium is as dangerous as too little. And the same with magnesium too. Well, and during fasting, it's a different kind of electrolyte mm -hmm. supplementation. I think people neglect that when you're fasting, you're not having any food. In the context of having food, there are some micronutrients and electrolytes that would be in the food itself. But when you're not eating, uh, the thing I love that the Keto Chow guys did was they put very concentrated forms of sodium and magnesium, but not potassium, because your body can very well regulate the levels of potassium when you're adequately uh, on uh, where you need to be with your sodium. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. Most of us aren't going to be fasting for days on end months on end or whatever right. where you might need the potassium at some points so the the amount of time is, is a week you're probably fine uh, just like you said with not not uh, supplementing with the potassium right. unless you find that you start to have the leg cramps and if you if you work out um, during your fast you probably need the potassium um, because you're sweating out a lot of this, but you need electrolytes in general if you're doing that because you are sweating them out. Right. Now, one thing that you and I put in our book, Real Food Keto, go get it, realfoodketo.com, um, was a whole chapter in there all about hydration. And when you're fasting, people don't realize this, Christine, but when you're fasting, you're basically doing a sped up version of keto <laughs> because you are dumping water, which is in your glycogen and in, in your muscles. So you're dumping excess glycogen, you're dumping water, you're dumping electrolytes, which is why it's all the more important when you are doing a complete water and salt only fast that you replenish those. And a lot of people have been asking me prescriptively, um, how much water, how much sodium, how much uh, potassium and magnesium and all these other things if you're gonna use that. Is it truly a bio-individual thing, just like keto and anything else? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, it, it depends on, well, the, the, the nutrients, the micronutrients, it, it depends on where your current levels are. And, and most of us really don't know, no. you know, those levels. Most are deficient, probably. Yeah, yeah. so um, I, I would just, um, and a lot of times the ones on the, in the vitamin shops, they're like, just like the RDA, the recommended daily allowance, yeah. and they're woefully... Um, inept yeah so again with with certain ones like magnesium and potassium you have to be careful because you can get too much of them and it could cause some serious health uh, you know problems but won't you just uh like with sodium and salt for example because some people have been saying hey how much of this salt is there too much salt you'll excrete it right yeah you will like your body um there's your your adrenal glands um, produce something called aldosterone, which regulates how much of this stuff that you dump gets absorbed and dumped. And right. so, um, this would be an area where I would um, have a little bit of more. Um, I would pay attention more to how you're feeling. If you have adrenal issues, right. you're probably not producing that that hormone aldosterone like you need to. Right. And so you may end up dumping stuff at a faster rate. Um, and I was going to think of something, and I forgot. Oh, the sodium. Um, so we are told to kind of fear salt by our doctor, and so everybody that fears salt, pop open your salt real quick. Is he lying in hot hair? In hot hair. Oh, I got a lot that time. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it. It. I've. I've heard it recommended, you know, to have, uh, you know, as much as seven, um, seven grams. Dilly so, dilly. So that it takes for somebody that has normal blood pressure, 120 over 80. If you have 7.5 grams of salt in a day, that will only raise your blood pressure at Ten most points. Six, points, six points, you're still within what's considered normal range. That's a lot of salt. We don't eat salt by the spoonfuls, so... Unless you're fasting <laughs> with Jimmy Moore, then you are. <laughs> Unless you're fasting. Um, so that is a lot of salt. So we don't need to fear the salt unless you have a salt sensitivity, which is a very small Minuscule. percentage of the population. Yeah. If you have um, high blood pressure... <laughs> I would try to not have as much. 
Although I wonder uh, these more higher quality salts, if that statistic holds up. Yeah, I, don't I know. think a lot of people use the fake salt, the mm -hmm. Morton's with the little girl yeah. with the umbrella. It's not real salt. Yeah, don't this is real stuff. salt. Um, I wonder how much of that would change the statistics if they actually used real salt. Yeah, I don't know. That's a that's a good point. And and speaking of the the salt, the girl with the umbrella, don't don't have that stuff. Blech. The reason why people. Um, use that stuff iodine. is because of the iodine in there. So where do they get iodine instead? You can get it in your in your sea vegetables. Seaweed! Like seaweed. We pelt. saw some in the grocery store uh, here locally. Mm -hmm. They now sell little seaweed strips yep. that you can just stick in your mouth and you get all the iodine. Yeah, and they also have kelp drops so you can add a couple of drops to your water. You did that, right? That, yeah, it's, it's that simple. So, um, that's so don't use that other salt <laughs> right use the use the good quality stuff so if you're just joining us we are doing a special jimmy rants nutritional pearls podcast crossover episode today with the lovely the beautiful the talented that gorgeous lady right there <laughs> christine moore ntp she is a nutritional therapy practitioner and she's giving her perspective on this thing that a lot of us are doing we're doing this seven day of days of fasting uh, currently, I just crossed over. I crossed over into the dark side, Christine, <laughs> into day four. And the first few days, you watched me. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, especially, you watched me. I wasn't doing so well. Mm -hmm. um, and so, does that ever concern you, seeing the symptoms of tired, maybe gnawing at the stomach, maybe some of these things as a nutritional therapist? Or do you see the big picture and understand it's a means to an end to get to this day four, mm -hmm. Uh, for example, for me, the very beginning of it, um, to get the benefits that come from fasting, which we did put in Real Food Keto, mm -hmm. is one of the ways that you can detoxify. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I really don't have any concerns of it. What I tell people, and I told one of my clients this, because she was asking about um, fasting with um, thyroid issues, and I said, just pay attention to your body. But here's the deal, when you fast, you give your thyroid a break, and so... If it looks like on your numbers that your thyroid is not functioning as well, it's, it's probably because it doesn't have to. It didn't have to work as hard. So I, I, I told my client, just pay attention to how you feel. If you start to feel bad, break the fast with a small meal and then a couple of hours later have a... Have a or not even that long, maybe 45 minutes later. Yeah, yeah, have your, have your bigger meal. <clears throat> but I, I, I tell my clients just to pay attention to, to how they feel. Um, for, you know, feelings of tiredness. A lot of this is mental, I think. Um, you think? Because we're so used to eating by the clock. And uh, Where have you guys heard that before? <laughs> didn't I just do a Jimmy Rants earlier on that very thing? Yeah, you did. And I didn't even know that. Um, so this is where, you know, if you start to have those issues of feeling like you need to eat something... Uh, get some of the salt, um, and then try to do something that occupies your mind. Do something that you like to do. Maybe. Like Christine just did a puzzle. Yeah. Would I that did. work? Yeah, yeah. Doing something that gets your brain off of thinking about eating, and you'll find that, you know, that, that those those problems will kind of go away. Right. Um, if, you're, if you're tired, uh, it's another sign that you might have an electrolyte need. Yep. Uh, but yeah, a lot of it is just mental. We're so used to eating, you know, when we go to fellowships, when we go to family gatherings, what do you do? You eat. So what do you think's going on? Uh, cause a lot of us that are on this fast, I just crossed in over into day four. Most people will be doing that within the next 24 hours. What happens between that first couple of days, two, three days where you feel bad, you're having the electrolyte problems and your body's adjusting what happens in day four that things click and you start to feel better and you're more energetic and your mind is sharp what's happening so i think some of that is um this word called autophagy oh that, you think autophagy is giving that benefit i think because it, your body is clearing itself of all these dead proteins so you think those were making you sluggish maybe maybe yeah yeah what about the ketones yeah, your ketones um, go way up at that point, and your blood sugar um, falls. And this is falls a thing. lot. Yeah, you don't need to be concerned about 
your low blood sugar unless you have symptoms of dizziness. Right. What are um, those symptoms? Dizziness. Yeah, dizziness, shakiness, Shaky. Jittery, feeling jittery. Hunger. Um, yeah. Major hunger, yeah, not ma- just head not, hunger. Yeah, not just head hunger, but major hunger. Uh, you experienced this when we went... Um, to Myrtle Beach one year, we were, you were, I forget, you were doing, trying to do like a 28 day fast or 21 day well, fast. Well, 21 day, and we were in day 17 and a half, <clears throat> and I, we had traveled, and I was doing everything. I was just, it was a good time, but it was stress, and stress was a big bugaboo. Yeah, and so at that point, my stomach you, growled you how were, long? <laughs> it was like 45 minutes. It was or horrible. Like that. And so at that point, you broke the fast. Because it was wise to do that. And this is where you need to listen to your body. Don't. It's really hard sometimes to distinguish head hunger from actual hunger. So how do you? When, well, when you have actual hunger, you you might have those other symptoms of feeling uh, lethargic, feeling jittery. Uh, it depends on what your blood sugar is doing too. Well, and even that's fool's gold because yeah. you could have some of that stuff and it's merely yeah. electrolytes that you need to salt up. Water up, electrolyte up, like I've been telling everybody. So, again, everybody, get your water. Dilly, dilly. And that's why I wanted to talk about, too, the water. Oh, yeah. Talk so, about yeah, water. Go. It's, it's important, definitely, to um, to drink the water because the electrolytes need the water to function properly. Right. But, um, Not you, too much. You don't want to chug it. You don't. You want to sip it throughout the day. I've been telling them that. I know. Sip that's, it. That's you awesome. taught me that. And I was talking with this lady um, at uh, a church function yesterday at a barbecue. The barbecue I was talking yeah, about. The barbecue. Um, I, she was sitting across from me and talking about how she was struggling with her digestion. And she had mentioned that she drinks two, I mean, big things of water at her meal. Well, Ugh. you're not supposed to do that. Because no water it, at a meal. You can have uh, like eight ounces. Of, cause I know Dr. Bernstein, uh, the famous type 2 and type 1 diabetes specialist, said that he would prefer his diabetic patients not to drink any water because it actually dilutes the stomach acid mm-hmm. and doesn't let you properly digest that food. So mm-hmm. he recommends no no liquids at all. Yeah. Yeah, and I would say um, if you have to have something... I recommend to my clients if they do have digestive issues, maybe eight ounces, which is not a lot, of warm lemon water. Or vodka. <clears throat> I'm not going to go there. I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't do that. No, no. That and definitely not during a fast. Please do not drink any alcohol. That'll dehydrate you. Um, but yeah, eight ounces. So so that's that was, in my opinion, one of her big issues there. She was drinking too much during her meals. It was diluting the stomach acid, so she wasn't able to properly uh, digest her food. So you want to sip throughout the day, and then, um, yeah, just it, that the water is just really crucial. And two, the water will help you feel like you, well, you do have something on your stomach. You have water on your stomach. Right. <laughs> so it, it will kind of help those hunger you know, if you're having those mental things. Right. So uh, there's been a lot of people that were gung-ho about doing this challenge and they had to drop out. And they dropped out somewhere between the 24 and 72 hour mark. And they're starting to feel bad. Oh man, I wanted to really get to it. I wanted to do this. But give some encouragement about what they did good for their body, doing that intermittent and a little bit further kind of fast because great metabolic changes happened that's going to benefit them once they go back to eating real whole foods, hopefully with somewhat of a ketogenic template. Talk about what that did to help them with their keto now. Yeah, so any type of fasting that you do, it's like a muscle that you have to make stronger. The more you do it, (laughs) the more you do it, the further you'll get to go. You'll know what to expect next time. Um, but even just going 24 hours or a little bit beyond that, you are giving your pancreas a break. You're giving your digestion a break. You're giving your thyroid a break. Um, it's just allowing the body to focus on, <coughs> excuse me, um, probably healing itself. Because what happens when you eat, your body will prioritize digestion over detoxification. And so that's another reason why we, we recommend uh, as NTPs, not to eat too soon before going to bed um, because your body will always prioritize the digestion. And you, and our main point of healing is at night when we sleep. Um, but the body is always detoxifying. Uh, but by fasting... You rev it up. 
Yeah, you 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 allow your body to focus on the detoxification, and that's some of the reason why someone may feel bad. Yes, too. thank you for bringing that yeah. out. If they're detoxifying, this stuff is being mobilized, and and if your detoxification pathways are open, then you'll be able to effectively get rid of those toxins from the body. And um, but in the short term, you temporarily might feel, they're in your blood system. Yeah, temporarily you might feel bad. So try to push through that. Um, I'm not saying ignore what your body's telling you. If right. you absolutely need to end the fast, don't feel bad about doing that. Just know that you have done something good for your body, even though you didn't make it the whole seven days. Um, anything that you do like that, even even intermittent fasting. Um, it's is the cumulative effects over time. Exactly. Yeah, a lot of people have also been saying things about feeling bad just suddenly. That's probably detoxification happening because you don't think about the fat stores. They're there for the sole purpose of protecting you. I know we look at them as very grotesque and, oh, I need to lose weight. But actually what they are is they are trapping in there a lot of the toxins, which includes some sugar, little pockets of sugar like uh, Dr. Jason Fung and I talked about in our book, The Complete Guide to Fasting, is you have this stuff in there. So it's going to be very difficult for your body who is trying to protect you to have that let loose. But when it does let loose, you're going to see elevations possibly in your blood glucose despite not eating for a few days. You're going to see and feel symptoms of feeling bad. I think that, Christine, that's a sign of good things that are happening in your body. Yep, it absolutely is. Um, I would I would be, I do have a little bit of concern if somebody's liver is overloaded. Um, you can have liver stress. And so at that point, you would have trouble detoxifying because the liver uh, produces the bile. The bile takes the toxins out of the body. And so if your liver is um, a little stressed, you might have... How would you know that? What, is there a test? Uh, yeah, liver function. There's several. Um, GTT, I think, is one. There, there's a lot of them. Um, Wait, a GTT glucose tolerance test? A G, GGT, maybe. Maybe it's GGT. It's not GTT. <laughs> I was no, like, wait a minute. GGT, I think. Okay. Or, yeah, something like ABC, that. ABC, GGT. Yeah, something like that. Um, ABC. But there, there's several of them. Easy as GGT. You know, if if your liver function is a little bit elevated in those numbers, then you, you your liver's probably stressed right. due to toxic overload. Um, I know certain over the counter medications like acetaminophen will um, raise those levels. Um, so that would be just one thing I would have in the be back cautious. of your mind. Yeah. Okay. Well, guys, uh, you've been listening to this special edition of Jimmy Rants. It's the crossover episode with Nutritional Pearls podcast. That's the beautiful lady mm -hmm. on the camera there today, Christine Moore, NTP. She's my co-host on Nutritional Pearls podcast. And so, so many of you are doing this seven-day fasting experience with me, and I thought it would be great to get a nutritional therapy practitioner's perspective all about fasting. So, Christine, we're going to see what they have to say and what their questions are for you. You ready? Yeah, and I, I want to mention one more thing. Oh, go. Um, it's recommended. If you're going to do something like extended fasting, always consult your doctor. Yes. Um, Goes without saying. Yeah, especially if you are on certain medications. Oh, type 2 too. diabetic that's on medication. You better go see him. Yeah, yeah. We don't do this willy-nilly. Um, yeah, because your insulin and your drug needs will change dramatically. I don't think people yeah. realize. Well, and that's another thing that I wanted to bring up, too. If you have... This would be another concern. If you typically have low blood pressure, you know, when you fast, your your blood pressure drops really, really quickly. And so um, that would be one of the things that I would say if you start to feel dizzy, right? Um, lightheaded, if you get dizzy from a laying down position or a seated position. That's I, not good. I would end the fast. But yes. yeah, always, always talk to your doctor. All right, one final question before we get to them because you did bring up uh, the low blood pressure. Who else should not be fasting? What would be a contraindication for someone doing a seven-day fasting attempt? Uh, I would say that for most people, it's okay. I, if you have an eating disorder of any kind or a 
past history of eating disorder, just have be that, cautious. Be cautious. Yeah. Um, because it could. It could trigger tr- you. Yes, it could be a trigger. Um, for people again that are on certain medications, um, just know that your blood sugar drops. So if you if you are on insulin, uh, again that's why we say please consult a doctor. Yes. Um, and then pregnant really, women that are maybe yeah. breastfeeding. P- yeah, pregnant. Because I've had that quite a bit. Should I do this if I'm breastfeeding? And I'm yeah. I'm saying I'm thinking no. Right. No, I agree. Uh, and then somebody that is um, underweight. They don't need to fast. Somebody asked that earlier about underweight, and I said as long as you have maybe double-digit body fat, but if you're underweight, you probably don't. You probably no. have single digit. Yeah, exactly. So it, and it, children. Um, I honestly don't think children need to do it. That's right. It That's because, what I'm saying. Because they they're not. still growing, they That's need right. the protein. Unless they're a teenager. Yeah, if possibly a teenager. Yeah, they could they could do some like a couple of days or whatever, right. and not hurt them. But That's right. They're. They're still growing, too. Their brains are still growing. Exactly. <laughs> well, the ketosis from the fasting might actually yeah, help their brains. True. That's true. All right, let's see what you guys have to say. Justin says, I'm almost 48 hours in. Way to go, bud. Uh, Martha says, 66 hours in. Thanks for the support. You're wow. welcome. Uh, Fan, Fanfastic. That's what that's her name or <laughs> his <laughs> name. Fanfastic. Uh, 18 hours into my seven days, struggling with a headache but pushing through. What is that? Probably an electrolyte imbalance. And so. or if they're used to drinking coffee or diet mm-hmm. soda, they might be having caffeine withdrawal. Yeah. And Is when, there something they can do for that? Well, when you're fasting, you can have black coffee. Yeah. Uh, I, although I did say that for some people, it would create somewhat of an insulin response. Some people. Caffeine, yeah. So so you've got to be careful with that. Yeah, that's a that's a test and see how you do. The caffeine right. and the coffee can actually uh, stoke the adrenal glands and that will create a stress response and it would be black coffee as you noted yeah so. black coffee all right uh 67 hours in yay says lisa excellent uh jylb says in today three now man you guys are killing it man bag lady black officially day three now thanks for all the support it's helped me get through this awesome all right uh, lisa has a question for you okay. why do some say to stop when you get nauseated? Uh, well, the nausea can be actually a sign of detoxification. Yes. Um, often that is, that is a classic sign. Releasing from the fat stores like we talked mm-hmm. about, right? Um, so, but, but it could be other things like low blood sugar. You might feel nauseous with, with low blood sugar. Dehydration so, would do that too, de- right? Yeah, dehydration. So um, it, it depends on the reason. I right. Because there are many factors that, that go into that. If you test your blood sugar and your blood sugar's fine, you're not feeling jittery. You're not feeling uh, dizzy or, or lightheaded or brain fog or lethargic. Um, I would try to push through it and maybe, um, let's see, for nausea, some ginger might be good, some ginger water or ginger tea. Right. That's, that's not, that doesn't have any sugar in it or anything, obviously, or fat. Let me ask you an aside because a lot of people have been telling me about their low blood sugar of 75 and they're so worried about it, but then they also show their ketones and it's 3.5 or they're like a day and a half into this and ketones are only 1.5 and oh, I thought it'd be much higher by now. Can you talk about that kind of inverse relationship between having blood sugar and having ketones and what the ketones are doing in the place of that blood sugar? Yeah, so it was, um, um, oh, remind me which one, Stephen Finney or, or, um. Just, what was the so information? They, they did the, they did the test. On oh, these Jeff Bullock. Jeff, Jeff Bullock did the test on these where, where they, they had these people, um. Fast. Fast. And then they stuck them with, in, they injected them with insulin. To purposely their, push their blood sugar Their up. blood sugar got as low as 19. Yep. Uh, but their ketones were Astronomically elevated. High. So what happens is as your blood sugar gets lower, as you become a fat bur- burner rather than a sugar burner, your body starts um, fueling itself with the fat. It starts running on the fat. And so it doesn't there are still certain functions of the body that need um, glucose, but your body can produce all that through gluconeogenesis. So is it safe to say that some of those ketones step in the place and replace what would be the blood sugar when you have that higher level? So when you guys see higher levels of blood ketones in the midst of doing an extended fast, 
it's replacing some of that blood sugar. So if you only test blood sugar alone and you see a 51, that's not reason to freak out because I would guess, Christine, that along with that 51, they're seeing a 4.5 on the blood ketones, for example. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. The ketones are actually the preferred fuel source for the brain I have and heard the that heart. somewhere, yes. Yeah, so unless you you know, start to have all those symptoms of low blood sugar um, and you test your blood sugar and you find that it's low, at that point you probably need to end the fast. But as long as you're feeling fine, I yeah. wouldn't worry about it because your ketones are, are fueling your body. That's right. All right, let's get back to the other questions. Love the salt. The keto drops have made me sick, though. Why would somebody get sick having sodium and magnesium? Maybe too much of it? Well, what's in those drops? Sodium and magnesium. That's it? That's it. So for some Concentrated people, forms. So for some people, and I'm this way, and it's a sign that your body needs to detoxify. Ooh. Um, phase one or phase two? Uh, well, if phase one is compromised... See how I was trying to is. drop a little knowledge on <laughs> yeah. her? Showing off my... Yeah, I'm just yeah. <laughs> If phase one is compromised, then phase two is definitely going to be compromised. So I find that if I take vitamins on an empty stomach, I... Not a good idea. I throw them up. And so um, for some people, um, having especially the concentrated forms of those things, it will make you sick to your stomach. So... Maybe back off on the amount. Yeah, back off on the amount. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you add any essential oils to the water? Mystery lady says, yeah, I think that's mm -hmm. a great idea. There's no, uh, I mean, there would be m nominal calories because it is a fat. The oils would be fat, but I wouldn't worry about it. Yes. If, if you think it's going to help you. You're talking, you're just talking about a couple of drops. I mean, couple if, of if drops. That, I mean, cause that's the, those, that, those oils are very potent. So it's not enough to worry about. Although I will tell you, um, I have this little sniffer essential oil thing and I've been using it in the midst of the fast. And when you need a perk up, salt is good. Water's good, but use some essential oils and just smell it. It will help you. Peppermint's really I amazing. Say, I was going to say peppermint is a really good stimulant. So you Yes. Uh, Jimmy, you mentioned previously to put the salt under the tongue, says Dai Goose. I'm trying that, but it burns. Would you think on top of the tongue works just as well? Thanks for the videos. They've really helped. I think sublingually, the reason I'm doing it there, Christine, is I'm trying to get the salt into my bloodstream quicker. Uh, but you could put it anywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can but just, sublingually is probably a good idea. If you can. If you can. If not, it's it not burns. It's, 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 and it burns, burns, <laughs> burns. That salt of fire. It's not necessary. That salt you know? of fire. My indie Johnny Cash <laughs> came out. Sorry about that. My eyes get dry without all those electrolytes, says Beth. Yep. They can. Yep. Lou Jean says, dilly dilly, sitting across from husband at the Thai restaurant during my tea and eating salt with no issues now, 60 hours in. She went out to eat with her husband. You, wow. you have not made me go out to eat with you. No. That would be torture. But you did uh, cook some bacon yesterday that did kind of tip me on day two. I know, and I felt <laughs> bad about it. I went and hid in my car. I'm like, do I need to go in the bedroom and eat this bacon? No, the smell was <laughs> all in the air in here. Uh, Angel wants to know, do you think the Ultima is okay? I've been drinking that for electrolytes. Well, I don't know what's in the Ultima. Oh, if it's got any sweeteners, that would be my only concern. Yeah, for some people, um, even even the um, no sugar, you know, sugar substitutes type of things, they can oh, stoke, they stoke a, hunger. Yeah, they can bad. stoke a, um, a hunger response. Yes. So be careful with those. It's a trial by error type of thing. That's right. Sandy says, love salt. Got some Redmonds coming from Amazon. Thanks for that tip. You're welcome. I'm almost out of my little miniature one here. I've been like going to town on that bad boy. Um, my salt just arrived, says Sandy. Keto chow fasting drops will be here tomorrow. Just started a three-day fast. And I love that a lot of you guys are jumping in on this at varying levels. And that's cool. If you want to do three days, do three days. Although I think if you go through the you-know-what of three days, get seven. Beth says, I'm def it's definitely mental during this fast. I've got all kinds of cravings and obsessions that come out of nowhere. Yeah, I think that's kind of been an interesting aspect of this, Christine, is the psychological aspect of just how much we think about food. 
I mean, it's in our culture everywhere. I mean, Taco Bell at one point had that fourth meal thing. For the you midnight know, snack. I know, right? So, I mean, we're, we're constantly bombarded with food. I mean, you have the cooking network. You have the food. The food we have network. people on here that are watching the Food Network while they're fasting. I'm like, <laughs> stop that. I could not do that. I could not do that at all. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we can't help but get away from it. Like I said, at family gatherings, what do you do? You eat. Um, so, it's, it's hard to get away from. Snoochie wants to know if you're fasting. She's going to try maybe to start tomorrow for a couple of days, see how she does. Uh, Trick says, my stomach growled for 20 minutes when I got up this morning until I had my salt. I feel great now. Isn't it amazing how that salt does that? I mean, it mm -hmm. just calms everything down. And I guess from your NTP perspective, that does, that makes sense because you're like, okay, your body's sending you a signal. We usually interpret those signals as hunger for food, but generally yeah. it's your body trying to say, okay, dummy, I need some salt. Will you please give me some? Well, in actuality, too, the the growling of the stomach may actually be kind of your digestive system doing its thing. Even though you haven't eaten anything, you're... It's still digesting. It's still digesting. Your body fat. That's why... <laughs> right? That's why you farted last night. I mean, you're... <laughs> I farted and I haven't had food in three days. Know, right? <laughs> well, where is this Thanks thing? for sharing that with my Jimmy Rance well, fans today. I mean, you today. tell them everything as it is, so... <laughs> We're an open book today, baby. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that, that's just proof that your digestive system is still it's working. It's working. And so your your tummy growling may just be your digestive system doing its thing. I know. It's the Taco Bell I had in 2002, <laughs> and it's just now manifesting itself. It's just it, now finding its way out. Yes. <laughs> what did I do bringing my wife onto this Jimmy Rants? <laughs> you married it. <laughs> Gary says, I eat one meal a day. I have more energy than when I was eating two to three times a day. That's not surprising. Um, please specify why so much salt having an argument with my husband about that. Snoochie uh, wants to explain to uh, her husband why you have to have more salt when you're fasting. So again, your body, it's just like someone going from the SAD diet, the standard American diet to a keto diet, a low carb diet or a keto diet. You're going to start dumping <clears throat> your glycogen stores. Your, you're going to start dumping electrolytes. And so that's why it's important to drink. But then you also need to replenish those electrolytes. And the best way to do that is the Redmond's uh, sea salt. Yep, just do that because your body needs that to, again, the, the nerves need to communicate with each other. They communicate by electrical impulses, and that's what those electrolytes do. They keep those nerves communicating with each other. So, yeah, salt is your friend. <laughs> salt is that magic elixir during fasting. Lisa says, I have low blood pressure, 100 over 70 usually. Mm. Uh black tea okay probably yeah again it's one of those things where the tea has caffeine in it and for ah, some people it might stimulate. stoke a um hunger yeah. uh, an insulin response which might stimulate hunger right um but it's again it's <laughs> if you do fine with it go for it yep tiara wants to know not even an obese teen yeah I, I, we talked about teenagers it probably is okay for them and especially if they have type 2 diabetes or obesity, it's probably a good idea for a few yeah. days to have them fast. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Monty Chody says, 60 hours in, feeling off. Uh, detox, pushing through it. Thank you for the support. Yeah, it probably is, like we've been talking probably, about yeah. here. Trick says, I had borderline high blood pressure last night. Took the BP 118 over 81. Wow. Wow. That's pretty darn normal. That's, yep. I also normally have eye twitches, but haven't had any all throughout the fast. And here's a great question that's come up again and again, and I told them my position on it, but I want to hear what an NTP has to say. Should I continue supplementation um, during the fast? And then what about after the fast? What should I do then? So during the fast, what do you think? Uh, this is a mileage may vary. Again, for some people like me, they can't take supplements on an empty stomach. It will make me sick. I got sick one time really yeah, bad. Yeah, you did. I in I, Nashville, I, Tennessee, I remember it. I remember that. We went out to breakfast with a friend and I was not doing well. 
I, I would say, I mean, it depends. If you're going to do like a 21-day fast, you probably need some some supplementation. We're talking about doing 21. Well, We're I, trying to get through seven. Well, I, I know, but <laughs> I'm, what I'm saying is these longer fasts. Uh, I think if you over have, seven, you're yeah, saying if, probably you need to think about liquid supplements, maybe. That might be better on because the you have to digest all those pills. Yeah. And if you don't have any food going in. And the stomach acid is sitting there. And if you're deficient in stomach acid, you're going to have issues with those things just sitting there. Yeah, the liquid is most readily absorbed uh, because it's already broken down, you know, right. pretty, pretty much. So, um, again, see how you do. Um, like, if, if you know, I know that I am deficient in trace minerals. And so I would, I have found that I do okay taking one of those right. in the morning if I haven't eaten. But... Just kind of pick and choose. Maybe if you feel like you need something, pick and choose what you take. Don't take all of it. Right. Yeah. Uh, Tanja says, about 33 hours in, my stomach felt like I had food poisoning. I pushed through it. Now it's gone, and I'm feeling so much better. That could be some of the detox mm -hmm. stuff kicking in it as could. well. Yep. Cookie says, I did break at 27 hours. Then I started up again last night. I felt like headed dizzy, and my glucose got down to 50. The glucose alone isn't the marker that you need to be concerned about. Those symptoms, always pay yeah. attention to the symptoms. Yeah. But you're still early on in a fast, so those symptoms are not surprising. Yeah, and if I don't know how many other times you fasted, but again, this is something you need to work up to. Don't feel like you, if you've never fasted before, don't feel like you have to do the full seven days. Right. Just do a day. Just do two days. I mean, if that's all you can do, great. And then the next time, you'll know what to expect. And you'll be able to go longer. And I've made that very clear all throughout this. Uh, Seath Lynn says, I ended at 59 hours. Congratulations. Good job. Plints 11, I ended at 47, but restarted right after dinner. I, let me caution people. If you fasted and then you broke it, give yourself a few days, weeks, maybe a, a month, um, and, and then try again. I think sometimes people think, well, I'll just get right back on it, but you're starting the clock all over again, and I think they're doing more harm than good starting so quickly after ending a fast. Well, and here's the thing. It's, it's very tricky. I mean, you're exactly right that, you know, if you've been fasting for a period of time and all of a sudden you have a meal, your body's going to be like, okay, where are my calories? Right. And it's going to be as if you... Hypocaloric. Yeah, and that is actually worse than fasting. So Jimmy's absolutely right. Give yourself a little bit longer and then start again. Yeah. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Sharon says, feeling tired, definitely weaker than usual. 68 hours in, hoping for more energy. It should kick in. It should kick in. Hang tight. <laughs> Mystery Lady says, every single commercial right now is all about food. <laughs> yeah, when you don't, don't have food, that it seems that way, doesn't it? Yep. Um, this is not easy, but really happy. This is the longest I've ever done. Come on, seven days, says Sharon. <laughs> yes. Monte says, riding the hunger waves are okay, but my biggest problem is I so miss the act of eating. And that's, that's, mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to be something. Our bodies are used to that. Yep. Yep. Again, we're so used to eating by the clock. Um, that we we feel like, okay, I looked at the clock. Oh, it's, it's 12 o'clock. I need have lunch no no you don't if you're not hungry no um the same with breakfast i mean a lot of people say that that breakfast is the most important meal of the day well i mean it it kind of is but it doesn't have to be eight o'clock in the morning or whatever right. um so it's just it's a matter of just breaking these old habits which is a great benefit of this extended fasting cm davis likes that we're funny together <laughs> that's what 25 years of marriage will do to you Gundolin says, feeling awesome, Jimmy. 69 hours in, I finally crossed over the creepy barrier. <laughs> yes, nice. yes, yes. Gail wants to know if feeling cold is normal. What would be the cause of that? So, yeah, um, what happens when you're fasting is blood flow um, changes uh, and it goes kind of away from your extremities. And so it's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but it, it, it does happen. You've experienced this, Jimmy. Yep. Um, so it's In the just, past, not this one. Right. Well, that's interesting. That's this good. one, I'm not cold at all. That's, that's interesting. And I think the electrolytes are helping with that. Yeah, the electrolytes will, will help with that. Um, so 
I wouldn't be too concerned about that. It's it's just a difference in the blood flow. So um, one of the interesting things about the fasting and the drinking in the water and is you got to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And my wife is right here. I've got to go to the bathroom. So I'm going to ask the next question, and you've got to entertain them while I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> So, so here's the next question. Uh, I heard you say not to drink water when you're eating a meal. Yeah, that's not relevant uh, to, it's not going to be long enough for you to answer. Um, yes, that's true, but we're not talking about eating meals. We're talking about fasting right now. Um, at 70 hours, I had the worst hunger yet. Drank salt water and took a nap. Still a tad hungry, so I'm salting again. So why would someone feel such intense hunger suddenly? What's metabolically happening and you're off? So. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I mean, it could be the fact that um, maybe you did have a sudden drop in blood sugar. I mean, if, you're, if that's the only thing that you're feeling, I would try to push through it. Um, it could be some sort of insulin response. I mean, sometimes um, some people can experience an insulin response with fasting because um, it is kind of a, a stress on the body. It's, it's not a bad stress, but it's, I mean, even good stress can stoke a, an insulin response. So, I mean, maybe, maybe it's that. Um, it's hard to tell, but Again, if, if that's the only thing that you are feeling, um, try to push through it. If it persists, then I would go ahead and break the fast. Um, and there's no shame in doing that. Um, again, you've done something really good for your body. And maybe the next time you'll go a little bit longer. I think, I mean, again, it's hard to know whether this is mental or if there's actually something physiologically going on in the body so don't be ashamed and upset with yourself that um that you feel that way just if it persists go ahead and just break the fast no shame in that right nope, nope. thank you guys i feel much better now <laughs> <laughs> hashtag real life fasting here uh keto plus fasting says i get cold too super normal day three can sometimes be the hardest but everyone is Different. That's a kind of a theme song of nutritional therapists, right? Yeah, bioindividuality. Bioindividuality, mm -hmm. even with fasting. Mm -hmm. So that's all we have for you for this episode of the Nutritional Pearls podcast crossover episode on Jamie Rance. So, uh, yeah, you glad to be back on Nutritional Pearls? I am. It's been a while. Been a little yeah. while, and we've got a few episodes left before you and I go away on sabbatical. That can't get here fast enough. <laughs> Can you tell she's so ready for it to come? So go listen to us, you guys. Nutritional Pearls podcast is available on Apple Podcast, Stitcher, really wherever you listen to podcasts. Go to llvlc.com. We have the whole family of podcasts that I do. Um, and so go check out Nutritional Pearls podcasts and this beautiful lady. Yep. So... Until next Monday, Christine, we'll see you then. Bye. All right, guys, that's it for this episode of Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com is the website. Go check us out over on JimmyRants.com, and you'll see that this show starts off live on Instagram Live. Uh, so go follow me there at Live and Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. Once you're there, you can engage live just like everybody did here today. Thanks for being here for this special episode today. If you missed the live, you can uh, watch it on replay. Oh, somebody put that comment. Love your humor. <laughs> I just noticed that people could leave oh, little comments cool. like that. That's cool. Um, thank you. We love being funny. Um, and Christine says, I get to look at his funny face every day. Um, <laughs> you try to be funny. <laughs> she doesn't think I'm funny. Uh, if you can watch it on replay for up to 24 hours, after 24 hours, it does disappear. Be sure to pop on over to YouTube. That's where we're housing all the past episodes. In fact, there's my computer. I uploaded the one from earlier. It just finished while we were doing this episode. So that's what we do. We pop it on YouTube, type in a keyword search, Jimmy Rance or youtube.com slash 
Live in Low Carb Man. Finally, the best of the best moments of this year's show. It's in a podcast called the Jimmy Rants Podcast. Go check it out on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher. And all of these links, you guys, are at jimmyrants.com. So until next time, say bye, Christina Wiener. Bye, Christina Wiener. She's a literalist. <laughs> we'll see you then.